Hey, it's me. Do you notice? Do you notice anything different about me? Well, you shouldn't, because I'm the same. But the background is different. Today is actually the first day that I'm filming in my new studio. Um, uh, yay. Ew. I really liked my old setup and I didn't feel the need to change it drastically. We still have the same kind of thing going on back here. But the rest of the room, which you cannot see, is quite different from my old studio. I'll show you that soon enough, my darling. <coughs> also, I can hear right now, it is very echoey in here. I haven't quite had time to set up the sound situation in here, so it's gonna be a little echoey for a little while until I get all that set up. Sorry about the echo. Any way, today's video has nothing to do with my new studio, so I should just shut up about it. I'm actually very excited about today's video. I hated that the first time I did it, I hated it the second time I did it. It's a combination of two things that I have done, which creates a new thing that I haven't done. I've tie-dyed clothes before. I've painted on clothes before. But have I painted on clothes that I've tie-dyed before? No. That's what I'm gonna be doing today. It's like two projects in one, basically like doing two videos in one week. Oh no, this is gonna be time consuming. Also, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit differently in the tie-dye department because you see how I didn't even have to look? Skills. This is the tie-dye kit that I'm using. Two minute tie-dye. Two minute. If you know anything about regular tie-dye, it's a pretty quick activity and then you have to wait like 12 hours because you have to wait for the dye to die. With this, it speeds up the process to two minutes. Two minutes. I have actually done this before. There are some drawbacks, but we'll get into that as we go. I should probably get started now. Let's begin. All right, here we are swimming in a sea of blue paper. Hi. Oh, hello. Bringing in the kit. It's beautiful. All right, let's break this open. Literally, I just tore it apart. Also, this little green sliver showing. Yeah, that's really bothering me. Go away. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, a snack. Another snack. Bag of stuffs. And what's the surprise in here? Hey, buddy. Inside of those, we have all the bottles of dye. These bottles come pre-filled with the powdered dye. The problem is the powder leaks. I can feel it all over the outside of the bottle. Look, see? Eh, eh, that's not good. So I'm gonna take all my bottles and then take a stupid long time to organize them into a rainbow order for no real reason besides my sickness. All right, let's make some room for this guy. I'm gonna take this damp paper towel and wipe off, you see, look at that, look at that. Wiping off each and every bottle to make sure that all that excess powder is removed. Why? Why, why? Is this necessary? Am I just a weirdo? No, okay, no. While you're tie-dyeing, you're gonna be touching the bottles with your hands. You're gonna be touching the clothing that you're dyeing with your hands. What happens when you get some purple dust on your hand and then you touch a yellow spot on the clothing? Well, congratulations, you've just made a poop spot. Smudges everywhere, it's not a good situation to, to be in. You can see all of that contamination that we have just avoided. Now, similarly, we need to wipe out the little containers to get all the little dye dusts out of there also. All right, move Moving on to exploring our little goodie bag here. This comes with some gloves, which I will not be using. I hate wearing gloves. I'd rather die my hands because that's all that's gonna happen if you don't wear gloves. Okay, <laughs> we've got the project guide here with some little ideas, which is very nice, although not gonna lie, that one's not particularly attractive. This one looks like a disease. And we have the instructions on the other side. Read through all instructions before beginning. <laughs> Two minute tie dye? It's gonna take 10 minutes just to read these instructions. We don't need this. I already know what to do, so it's fine. Just trust me. Finally, some rubber bands. Now they used to put a big plastic drop cloth in these kits, but it seems that they have gotten rid of that. I'm journeying to my drawer of plastic. This is where I keep a bunch of old Ziplocs that I can reuse. Isn't that weird? Um, yeah. Also, some big drop cloths. So let me roll this out. We only need a small section of it today. I'm gonna cover my surface with 
this, it's really a must. Tie-dye can get real messy. Now let me introduce you to shirts. I bought a few of these like sleeveless muscle shirts. I did order all white shirts, but they sent me one black one for some reason. Okay, I don't know. Whoops. I guess I have a black muscle shirt now. That's fine. I'm gonna replace that with this one, which is just a standard short sleeve t-shirt. Okay, first step, get the shirts wet. Let's start with shirt number one. These muscle shirts have a brand on the outside of them, which I don't really like. Fortunately, they're so sheep, sheep, they're sheep, bad. <laughs> Okay. Um, fortunately, they are so cheap that the printing peels right off. Wow, that's quality right there. Okay, we've got an unbranded t-shirt now. Goody, and time to die. Sorry, I couldn't resist saying it like that. I chose these colors, the full rainbow, so I just need to activate them. All you have to do is add some water, shake it up. Once again, these bottles are failing me, okay? They look bloody. Not a good performance. I'm actually not gonna leave it there though. I'm actually pouring out half of the dye. <gasps> Isn't that wasting it? Well, kind of. I know these colors are super vibrant at full strength, but I actually want a more washed out look. So I'm watering these down a little bit. I know I could have poured out the powder, cut it in half, put one half away, put the rest back in the bottle, but um... No, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm okay. And now with my very pink fingers, they look amazing, my pink dye is ready to go. And then all the other colors are ready to go too. Now give me that shirt. Okay, I'm gonna use the scrunch technique for this one, which is probably the most basic tie-dyeing strategy that you can do, but I don't need to do anything crazy here since I'm gonna be painting on top of this. Now ready for the dye, here we go. Yay! So I'm just kind of being random with the pattern that I'm putting the colors in. I want the full rainbow of colors on this shirt, which by the way, last time I did a tie-dye video, like 90% of the items had the full rainbow of colors and some people were mad. Don't worry, this time I'm gonna do more variety, okay? Only one of the shirts is gonna have the full rainbow. Now this is ready to flip over and then this happened and my heart cried out, but we did make a full recovery, so that's fine. So far, this is very much like the normal tie-dye process. Here's where the twist comes in. I'm gonna place the shirt into my little food container, wave to it, bye, bye, and place that in the microwave. What? Yes, the microwave. Set it for two minutes and 30 seconds, and there it goes, it's in there. You can see the reflection of my light that's pointed at the ceiling. Oh, look, there's me dancing. Okay, pull that out. And here's where the name of this kit kind of lies. You have to leave the shirt in the container for 15 minutes to set. So it's not two minute tie dye at all. After 15 minutes, you can open up the container, but then you have to wait five minutes for it to cool. Again, how, how is, is this, this two, two minute, minute tie, -dye? tie dye? Once that's done, we can pull out the shirt. Uh oh, we've got some mud under there. Just rinse that out thoroughly, squeezing out all the excess dye until the water runs clear. Here's how the shirt came out. There are several little muddy areas. The green is just running rampant. I don't know why there's so much green. I really was not happy with it. I thought it was very ugly. Now I know I said I'm only gonna do one rainbow t-shirt, but I mean, that one didn't count. Okay, I wasn't happy with it. This time, to try to avoid the muddiness, I used the classic spiral technique, which makes it a little bit easier to keep your colors organized and clean. I went easy on the green because we saw what happened last time. Also, I don't wanna oversaturate this with dye. I wanna keep everything nice and clean clean and not give the colors an opportunity to run into each other too much. I even let some of the excess dye soak into a paper towel. Normally when I tie dye, I use way more dye, but I'm just trying to be safe this time because of what happened last time. Now into the container and skipping to this part where we are ready to rinse and poop. <laughs> I'm clearly an adult here. Despite all my efforts, the bottom is still all muddy. And this is something that I've discovered is a bit of a problem with this tie dye method. You have to place them in these containers and then the microwave causes all the juices to run out and it creates a puddle of dye on the bottom of the container and you get all the colors mixing together. So this may not be the best technique for a full rainbow tie dye, but here's how it came out. It's a little bit more white on the shirt than I wanted 
wanted. That's because I went so light with the dye, but I think it still came out pretty. And on to the next shirt. This is the short sleeve. I'm back to the scrunching technique now. This time I'm gonna put some extra rubber bands. See, I learn. And then I'm throwing some pink dye all willy-nilly. It really doesn't matter where it goes. Oh, over here, over there. Oh, there, that, that right there. Okay, that's fine. Then I'm throwing on some red dye and I'm only using these two colors. So it's fine if they mix together, they're gonna look fine. We don't really have to be all that careful. And can I get that to go, please? Now I did want some white to be left on the shirt, but I was actually surprised by how much white was left over. That's fine. I still like this. Now for the last shirt, it's another tank top. Ooey, ooey. Back at it again with the scrunch. I'm basically doing the same thing that I did with the red and pink shirt, but instead I'm using two shades of blue. Doesn't that look so pretty? Okay, into the box. Into the box. And poof, here it is all microwaved. I do like this method of tie dyeing, even though it does take longer than two minutes. It is significantly faster than traditional tie dye. Now that the dyeing process is done, I'm collecting my drop cloth. We can get rid of that. And here is the first shirt after going through the wash and drying off. The red areas got a little speckly. Mm, I don't know, I think it wasn't mixed up fully, maybe, I don't know. Otherwise, the shirt looks really good. So now for phase two. Oh, we're switching gears, we're doing the thing. I'm gonna paint right in this area. First, I need to grab a piece of paper, slide that inside of the shirt, just in case the paint decides to try to leak through. It's been a little while since I've painted on clothing, so I decided to make this one kind of a warm up. okay? Go simple. So I'm painting a strawberry. It's gonna be one of my many, many strawberry designs. But I did try something a little different with the leaves. I tried to paint them kind of standing upright instead of my usual, I don't know, whatever way that is. You know, I'm just shaking things up, keeping it fresh. Ooh, surprise, shocking you. Also, this is not an ordinary strawberry, okay? It's wet. There's some sort of pink strawberry goo dripping off of it. I don't know why or what that is. I just thought it would look cool, and so there it is. Once that first layer is nice and dry, we're moving right into the details already. I really like the way this paint looks on the shirt. It's much better than some of the other times that I've tried painting on clothing. I think because this shirt is a bit thicker and I think I use leather paint in the past. It looks kind of scratchy and dry and it's a little stiff on clothing. This paint is nice and shiny. It's very flexible. It's a mixture of puffy paint and matte brush on fabric paint in case you wanted to know. The leaves do look a little weird though. Do they even look like strawberry leaves? They kind of remind me of Fred the squishy plant inspired by Fred the fake plant but I guess they're cool. That's fine. It's a style. I added the little seeds on there. The sped up version of that looks crazy. My hand is just like and I gave it some nice little shinies to make it look glossy and mm, yummy, good. I think I could have added a little bit more detail or dimension to the uh, dripping substance. Still don't know what that is. Maybe the strawberry is like melting or something. That part looks a little bit flat, but that's okay. Finally, I added my signature to it and ba-boom, here is the first shirt finished. And it looks awesome. Awesome. It is a shirt, so I feel like we need to see it on a human type form, um, which I am, I think. So get ready for some very awkward and unenthusiastic modeling because as you know, I'm not the best at this, but I'm here and I'm trying. But yeah, the shirt is great. It looks so bold and fresh. I'm very pleased with it. All right, and on to the next shirt. This color kind of reminded me of someone I love and care about very much. Do you know who I'm talking about? So I decided to go with that and I sketched out a real quick design here and then went to work painting it. Now the trickiest part of painting on t-shirts is the edges of the painted design. Getting those outside edges perfectly neat can be kind of difficult because you gotta work with all the little fibers of the shirt and it kind of makes it look jagged sometimes. I decided to make a burger kind of the central point of this design here. Then we've got Derp kind of laying on top. He's draped over it and he's very happy. I was just gonna make this about Derp and his burger but then I decided you know hey let's let's throw pickle in there too. The burger comes with a pickle. 
funny. And so there he is kind of peering from behind the burger. He doesn't really care all that much about the burger, but you know, he's here and he's here to offer his silent support as usual. Now just adding the little faces on, I gave Derp his usual big smile, finishing that up and just adding some of the final touches, the little Derp freckles. And of course, Pickle and Derp are not Pickle and Derp without their colorful little polka dots. And there we have it. I'm done with that one. This is how it looks on. Yeah, okay, do the awkward hair flip. Gosh. Okay, good job. I love this one so much as well. I love the cute little versions of Pickle and Derp. They look so cute. I saw someone comment that we haven't gotten enough of Pickle and Derp recently. So this is for you, friend. They're back. And bam, for the last shirt, I'm gonna paint on one of these rainbow shirts. I actually don't hate this one now that I'm looking at it all finished. It's kind of actually cool. I don't know why I was so mean to it earlier. So I need to decide which one of these will work better to paint on. Must decide, must decide. Uh, 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 uh. Mm, okay, this one. For the design on this one, I knew I wanted to do an ice cream cone. Rainbow tie-dye plus ice cream that just feels like a natural combination. But I felt like that wasn't interesting enough. So I decided to turn it into a cat ice cream cone. General rule of thumb, if you wanna add interest into your art, just add a cat, just a cat. It'll always work. So I'm gonna paint this and let's enjoy the loveliness of these close-ups. La 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 la, ooh, da do da do da. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm really ruining that. Now I have to say, this is definitely one of my favorite projects that I've done recently. I had so much fun with this. I'm so satisfied with the results. I love the tie-dye with an image over top of it look in general. I just think it's so cool and fun. I just had a blast with this. I would totally recommend it. If you wanna try it, go for it. Just make sure the shirts you get aren't super thin and use fabric paint. And look at that, we've got the whole bottom layer of color done. So now just kind of filling in the details of my cat ice cream. I think part of the reason I enjoyed this so much is because I get to paint something cute without having to worry about the background at all because I really don't enjoy painting backgrounds all that much. So with this, we got the tie-dye in the background already. It's cool, it's fun, it's colorful, and we just get to add a cute little image on top. Now time for her little face. I wanted to make her look a little chubby and give her a nice sweet little look. And then we just have some of the final details left, including the... Jeez, getting a little aggressive there, Sprinkle Song. Adding the final little signature, and it's all finished. This came out so stinking cute, I love it. I love how the colors are bright, but just faded enough where they don't compete too much with the painting. They really came out perfect. Everything goes together really well. I think all these shirts came out super nice. I'm very proud of them, okay? And I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.